so if new lithosphere is formed at diversion plate boundaries, that means that it must be being destroyed somewhere else. If not, the surface area of Earth would be increasing, which would mean the Earth would have to be expanding in size to accommodate that additional surface area. So we know Earth is not expanding, so this creation of oceanic lithosphere at divergent plate boundaries must be being compensated for somewhere else. And where that occurs is at the third type of tectonic plate boundary, which are convergent plate boundaries. There's two types of lithosphere, oceanic and continental lithosphere, so therefore there are three types of convergent plate boundaries. We can have oceanic lithosphere converging with continental, oceanic lithosphere converging with oceanic, and finally continental lithosphere converging with continental lithosphere. We're first going to take a look at those convergent plate boundaries in which oceanic lithosphere is involved. Something uh, very interesting happens in this situation, and that is the oceanic lithosphere, and when it's involved in a convergent plate boundary, it subducts or it sinks, and another word for sinking in geology is it subducts uh, from the surface down into Earth's interior into the mantle. Okay, and uh, regions where this occurs, where the oceanic lithosphere subducts down into Earth's interior, are known as subduction zones. And you can see one here, where this oceanic lithosphere is converging. It's moving in this direction, converging with this continental lithosphere, moving in that direction. And as a result, this oceanic lithosphere it subducts underneath it. So there are several features that are found along every subduction zone, and those are deep ocean trenches, volcanism, and large earthquakes. Uh, the first type of subduction zone we're going to look at is one which occurs whenever we have oceanic lithosphere converging with continental lithosphere. In this case, oceanic lithosphere always subducts under continental lithosphere. Why? Well, it's because continental lithosphere has this thick continental crust. That's uh, relatively low density rock, mostly granite. And because it's low density and it's clear and it's uh, very thick, it's too buoyant to sink. And so continental lithosphere never subducts, never sinks. Once at the surface, it remains at the surface. That's why the continents are so old. So oceanic lithosphere always subducts under continental lithosphere. And we can see the three features that are found along every subduction zone. We have the deep ocean trench running along from here. We have the volcanism. Okay. And we can't physically see it, but we have earthquakes that occur. Earthquakes occur because this overriding plate, it gets flexed down with, with this subducting uh, oceanic lithosphere, and it gets flexed down, and eventually it snaps back up to its original location, and that motion of that overriding plate rebounding or snapping back up is what generates the large earthquakes. In, uh, in oceanic continental convergence in particular, we have uh, the formation of a coastal mountain range. And this coastal mountain range is formed by the, the uh, deformation of the thick continental crust due to the collision of the two plates. And the volcanoes usually coincide with the uh, coastal mountain range. And you'll note that the volcanism always occurs on the overriding plate. So in this case, the continental lithosphere is overriding the oceanic lithosphere. And so the volcanism is on the overriding plate, the continental plate in this case. Here's an example of oceanic continental convergence and subduction. Here we have the Nazca plate converging with and subducting under the South American plate. Now, the Nazca plate is oceanic lithosphere, and this part of the South American plate is continental lithosphere. The shade of blue indicates the depth of the water, with light blue being shallow and dark blue being deep. We can see this dark blue line running along here. You might guess that is the deep ocean trench. These colored triangles are active volcanoes. You can see how the volcanoes run along the subduction zone. 
And the west coast of South America is very prone to large earthquakes, so it has all three features found along the subduction zone. And because this is oceanic continental subduction, we have the deformation of the continental crust, forming a coastal mountain range, which is the Andes. Uh, I do also want to note, take this opportunity to note, that the east coast of South America is not a play boundary. So sometimes uh, people think that every edge of a continent is a tectonic plate boundary. That's not the case. Uh, the, this is oceanic lithosphere and this is continental lithosphere, but they are one continuous plate. This is the South American plate. And so tectonic plates can in include different types of lithosphere. The next type of uh, subduction zone we're look at was occurs whenever oceanic lithosphere converges with oceanic lithosphere. In this case, it's the older oceanic lithosphere, which is colder and therefore denser. It sinks or subducts under the younger, warmer, and less dense oceanic lithosphere. And you can see the formation of a deep ocean trench. Oops, sorry, my pen wasn't working. The deep ocean trench. There's volcanism on the overriding plate, and large earthquakes occur. The volcanism now, since the overriding plate is oceanic lithosphere, forms along the seafloor, and each subsequent eruption builds the volcanic structure to eventually it pokes its head above sea level and becomes a volcanic island. So we call this string of islands that runs along uh, oceanic oceanic subduction zone volcanic island arc. Okay, why it's called a volcanic island arc is because most subduction zones are curved in shape or they or they are of the shape of an arc, and so the volcanoes, volcanic islands, are in the shape of an arc as well. Let's look at an example where this is occurring. So here we have the Pacific Plate over here, the Philippine Plate, and the Eurasian Plate. And we have the Pacific Plate subduct, converging with and subducting under the Eurasian Plate. Here is the trench. Okay. And here the Pacific Plate is subducting under the Philippine Plate. And this is the trench. You have the volcanoes running along the trench. These volcanoes form the volcanic island arcs. Of, we have the Japanese islands, the Marianas Islands. These are all volcanoes that form as a result of this subduction zone. And there's another subduction zone here where the Philippine plate is subducting under the Eurasian plate. And there's that trench. And we have the vol other volcanoes associated with it as well. And this area is also prone to large earthquakes. This is the location of the 2011 Tohoku earthquake, which uh, generated the tsunami that uh, destroyed Sendai, in Japan. So we have all the features of a subduction zone. We have the trench, we have volcanism, and large earthquakes. And in oceanic oceanic uh, convergence of subduction, the volcanism produces what's known as volcanic island arcs. One notable feature is this deep ocean trench down here, it's known as the Marianas Trench. And it happens to be the deepest part of the ocean, just under seven miles deep. Only three people have been to the bottom of it. Uh, uh, two, two gentlemen in the late 60s or early 70s, 70s I believe, went down in a submersible called the Challenger Deep. And then more recently in 2013, James Cameron privately uh, funded an expedition when he went to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. So more people have been to the bottom, uh, more people, sorry, have been on the moon's surface than have been to the deepest part of the ocean. So a little summary of subduction zones. So when you have oceanic continental convergence and subduction, oceanic lithosphere always subducts under continental lithosphere. When we have oceanic oceanic convergence and subduction, the, the older, therefore colder, and therefore, denser oceanic lithosphere subducts under the younger, warmer, less dense ocean lithosphere. So we mentioned that volcanism occurs along subduction zones. But the question is, why does volcanism occur here? And this question eluded geologists for a while. And the answer is quite surprising. And it's, it's a very un unintuitive. Uh, the reason for this volcanism is water. So this oceanic lithosphere formed at a mid-ocean ridge from molten rock cooling and solidifying. 
So what this means, uh, what happens is there's water gets trapped in the rock in a molecular level. So you have the molecules that are bonded together forming the, the crystalline solid that is the rock. And there's, in there, there is a sporadic water molecules. Okay, so just some water molecules distributed throughout there. So it's trapped in the rock. The water is at a molecular level. Well, that water is then transported down into the mantle by the subducting ocean lithosphere. And once the ocean lithosphere gets around 100 kilometers deep, the pressures and temperatures down here are very large. So large that the rock in the ocean lithosphere is no longer stable. Remember this rock formed surface where the pressures and temperatures are much lower. So this rock becomes unstable at these higher pressures and temperatures and it begins to undergo chemical reactions which are also referred to as metamorphic reactions. But during these chemical reactions the water that was trapped in the rock is then released and those individual water molecules they migrate up into the overlying rock in the mantle above them, the asthenosphere, in this wedge of asthenosphere that's above the subducting lithosphere and below the overriding lithosphere. And what happens is that water that percolates up into this mantle rock, it lowers the effective melting temperature of that melting rock. So that this rock isn't heated up, this rock, the pressure this rock is under isn't changed. What happens is the infusion of this water causes the rock to begin to partially melt at the temperature it's currently at. So we see this in different substances where if we introduce um, one substance into another, we can change the, uh, the, the freezing or melting point. Say for example, if we dissolve sodium chloride salt, table salt, into water, that depresses the freezing point. So water will not freeze at zero degrees centigrade. After a salt dissolved in it, you have to cool it to a cooler temperature before it freezes. So that's one example of how infusing one substance with another can uh, change the melting temperature of, of the, the original substance. And that's what happens here. The infusion of this water lowers the effective melting temperature of the mantle rock, causing it to partially melt. Okay, so now the production of melt through this partial melting uh, results in liquid rock that is less dense than the solid rock around it. So that liquid rock begins to ascend towards the surface, where it eventually will pond and form magma chambers. And while it's ponding in these magma chambers, pressure begins to build until the pressure is significant, not significant sorry, enough that it can break through the overlying rock and result in a volcanic eruption. So the reason why volcanism form, uh, occurs along subduction zones is because water is being transported down into the mantle by the subducting oceanic lithosphere at subduction zones. Here is uh, a graphic of a subduction zone where you have the oceanic lithosphere converging with what it looks like the uh, continental lithosphere. The oceanic lithosphere subducts underneath. We have uh, metamorphism occurring in the subducting oceanic lithosphere releases the water, which causes partial melting, which results in the volcanism. So the third type of convergent plate boundary is continental-continental convergence. And this is also the death of ocean basins. So what happens is, say in this example, India used to be separate from Eurasia. And there was an ocean basin between India and, and uh, the Eurasian plate. As India was moving north towards Eurasia, that oceanic lithosphere that was underneath that ocean basin was subducting under the Eurasian uh, continental lithosphere. So we had a trench and volcanisms and, a volcanism and everything that goes with the subduction zone. Eventually, all that oceanic lithosphere was subducted and the continental lithosphere of India began to converge with the continental lithosphere of Eurasia. Now, continental lithosphere, remember, is too buoyant to sink. So what happens is there's a massive amount of deformation, crustal deformation, which produces very large mountain ranges. And that is how the Himalayas formed from the significant deformation due to the convergence. And also, the plate uh, that was attached to the subducting oceanic lithosphere 
it gets pulled underneath the other plate, but remember it's too buoyant to sink, so it just kind of slides underneath it, just like a, say, a, a raft in the pool. Uh, you can push them together and one raft might slide underneath the other one. So as a result, from the Indian plate sliding underneath the Eurasian plate, it pushes it up, producing this region of high elevation, which is the Tibetan Plateau.